This video will document the process of installing ICE 2.4 on VMware vSphere 6.0 from an ISO file. You will need to have the ISO file downloaded to your PC to follow along with this video. In vSphere, select the host on which you will install ICE, then click the Configuration tab. Under Hardware menu, choose the Storage. Right click on the Data Store to be used and choose Browse Data Store. Click on the Upload button and choose Upload Files. Select the ISO to use and click Yes on the Warning dialog. Once the file uploads, you'll see it listed in the file browser. Close the data store browser at this point. Now, right click the host and choose New Virtual Machine. Click the Next button and give the virtual machine a name. Once you have named it, click Next and choose the data store for the installation. Click Next and choose Linux as a guest operating system. It defaults to Red Hat 7. So click Next and choose a number of NICs to connect, and then the networks for the NICs to connect to. Click Next, and then set the hard disk size for the virtual machine. Under the different options, choose one of the thick provisioning options for the hard disk size. We would like to provision all the drive space at this time. Click Next, select Edit Virtual Machine Settings, and click Finish. On this screen, we're going to set the memory allocation. Here you'll see I set to 16 gigabytes. Then we're going to set the CPUs. I'm setting the number of CPUs at 4 with a single core apiece. Then I'm going to set the data store ISO to browse to the ICE 2.4 ISO as shown on my data store. Remember to select connect the power on so that when you turn on the VM you have the device loaded. Next click the resources tab to set the hardware reservations for ICE. We're going to set the CPU reservation at 20 gigahertz. And then for the memory, we'll select the option for reserve all guest memory allocated and click finish. Once you click finish, the VM will be created. Once created, right click the VM and choose Open Console. Press the Play button on the console menu to power on the VM. At the installation menu, choose Option 1 and press Enter. This begins the installation and it takes quite a while. I've sped up the video so you can see the process without all the wait. At the first login prompt, Type setup to begin the script. First, enter the host name that you've chosen for ICE. Then enter the IP address that's been allocated. Next is the subnet mask. And the default gateway. Enter in the default DNS domain name here and then the IP address of the DNS server. If you have a secondary IP address you can put that in in the next step. We're going to skip it. Enter in the IP address of the NTP server here and again if you have a secondary you can enter it here. Choose your time zone and I always choose to enable the SSH service. Pressing enter here chooses admin as a default username. If you put your password in wrong, as is easy to do with VMware consoles, then just put in the password again to make sure that all your characters match. When your passwords finally do match, the ICE database installation will begin to run. Again, I've sped up this process so it takes less time, but you can still see each step as it happens. Once ICE restarts and you get the login prompt, go ahead and log in with the user you just created in the last script. Once you're logged in, run the command show application status ICE. This will list the processes that ICE uses We're going to pay attention to the application server. You can see it's an initializing state here. For your commands, you can also use a shortened command. I like to use three characters per command. As you can see, the application server is still initializing. 
you can use the up arrow to cycle through commands and as you can see the application server is now running. With this process running we're now ready to log into the web GUI. Open your browser and in the address bar type the IP address that you assigned to ICE. You will get a certificate warning error because we're using self-signed certificates out of the box. Go ahead and accept the error so that you can log into ICE. Log in with a user that you had created in the setup script to get into the web GUI. Once you log in and the dashboard fully loads, you can take pride in the fact that you've just finished installing ICE.